Hello, affiliate tip fans. It's that time of night when I read and you listen to Suicide Squad, Chapter 20. Rip Flag stood by the hotel window and watched June smiling as she dreamed. She was amazingly beautiful, smart and sweet, but he still wasn't certain why she had chosen him. He definitely wasn't in her league. Flag was a soldier. His job was to kill people who threatened the United States. He wasn't the sentimental sort, and that made him better at his job. He could have sex with a foreign spy, put a bullet in her head while they were doing it, then move on, a, on without remorse. Yet he didn't want to leave June's side, ever. He heard her calling his name and he walked to the bed, thinking she was awake. She was still sleeping, though. Then a frown replaced her contented smile, but her voice grew deeper, with a very definite dark edge. She was no longer saying his name, but she was calling out to another, Enchantress. The words slipped from her lips, she repeated it, Enchantress. An instant later, she changed, transformed from the beautiful archaeologist to something darker and deadlier. Flag grabbed his gun and reached for his cell phone. Don't you dare call Waller, Enchantress said, but I couldn't tell where the voice originated. She froze. If you do. Suddenly, leaning over the bed was June, who was seeing. She took her hand and checked for a pulse. There wasn't any. She was dead. She was intubated. And there were IVs in her arms. Arm. Electrocardiogram stickers were everywhere. The detritus of a heroic life-saving attempt by the hospital staff. Without, know what, without knowing why, Flag was screaming. He didn't want to leave her. Not after having just found her. Not after she so completely changed his life. The grim-faced nurse unplugged her. She was gone. Again, she screamed. This time, the scream brought him back to reality. He was in their hotel room. There were no signs of any life-saving equipment. The scream was gone, too, replaced by Enchantress. This time, her eyes were open. Flag aimed his block at her. She ignored it. Maybe she just didn't give a damn. What was that? He demanded. What did you do to me? Chantress held a finger to her lips. That was a preview, she said. Tell anyone, especially Waller, and I'll be back for the main act. She was gone in an instant. Flag still had no idea if any of what he'd seen was real. Amanda Waller was in the bedroom of her Virginia home, out cold, sleeping off an empty wine bottle. A loaded pistol lay on her nightstand. Enchantress watched as Flag had watched June. She remained perfectly still and saw the case, the one with her heart in it, lying on the floor by Waller's bed. Waller's phone lay on the bedside table. Would Flag disobey and call? Minutes passed. The phone remained asleep, like Waller. She moved toward the case, and a red light flicked on. Instantly, she froze again. Abruptly, she knew exactly what she was seeing. It was the access to Waller's secure office, so she disappeared from the bedroom. And reappeared in a very cramped space, a secure phone and a sheaf of documents sat on the desk. The top one was labeled Top Secret. She flipped through the briefing pack from the White House, meeting June had attended. There was a boring minute-by-minute -minute summary of the meeting. Nothing important. She flipped the page and stopped dead. There, in front of her, a photograph, a second jar from the Skull Cave altar. At a glance, she knew it as the male counterpart to the one that granted her life in Tyson. She stared at it, transfixed, and touched the image as if daring to become a three-dimensional reality instead of a two-dimensional facsimile. But then... For just an instant, she shuddered to the tenseness of things. She slowly looked up, almost afraid of what she'd see. Yet there was no reason to fear it. The male jar sat on the shelf, right in front of her. 